Neopets was essentially the perfect blend of a lot of culturally popular trends in the 90s and early 2000s. Let's paint a quick picture of being a kid during this time. The internet was fairly new. Browsing the web allowed the discovery of a ton of cool little flash game websites. And if your parents let you, you got to play online games like Ultima Online or EverQuest. Culturally, video games were at an all time high in popularity with the Game Boy spreading around like wildfire. I don't know about you, but I was huge into Pokemon back in the 90s growing up. The games, the trading cards, the anime, I absolutely loved all of it. But besides Pokemon, there was a ton of little monster animal collecting themed games or peripherals that all tried to capitalize on the Monster Buddy hype. Digimon was another freaking awesome franchise that was born during this time that gave Pokemon a run for its money. Tamagotchi Pets was also a pretty popular digital pet toy that sort of falls in the the same category. Looping back around to Neopets, which released back in November of 1999, it came out at a perfect time in the social space, capturing nearly everything kids wanted at the time. It was largely marketed as a free-to-play virtual pet hub, but it had so much more than that. It had tons of little flash games to play, web forums where you could talk to other players, creating a digital social atmosphere where you can make friends, digital pets and items you could collect and show off, and was essentially an early social networking site. At the height of its popularity, it rivaled franchises like Pokemon, which was not surprising. Are you serious? The designs of Neopets was incredibly appealing, with its cutesy little animals that appealed to a ton of kids. However, Neopets nowadays is no longer the juggernaut it used to be. Most kids nowadays are playing games like Roblox or Fortnite. Online web hubs like Neopets have struggled to stay relevant in the modern era. Now they just tend to be fond nostalgia bait memories for the 30-something year olds like me. And in no way is that depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Recently though, Neopets has been getting a slight resurgence with the company celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. So ultimately though, will this resurgence really bring Neopets back into the spotlight? Let's talk about some of the history of Neopets and ask the question, is Neopets dead or alive? Activated pets that you'll love. Today, when you look up Neopets, you'll still get quite a lot of hits with people either showing off collections or talking about Neopets nostalgia, along with other more questionable stuff. If you look at Google Images, <clears throat> boy, that escalated quickly. But to really talk about Neopets and its history, we gotta start at the beginning. The beginning of Neopets can sort of be compared to how Facebook and other social media sites started. It initially began with two people. Adam Powell initially conceived the idea and then shared it with his future wife, Donna Williams. The two began work on the site in September 1999 and then officially launched later that year on November 15th, 1999. The initial plans for the site was to be something that you university students could browse on for entertainment. Adam, Donna, and a few friends thought it could make a few bucks through small advertisements, so it seemed like it would just be something small they could put out there and make small passive income while attending university. Obviously, it grew way past their expectations, logging 600,000 page views a day in as little as a month. This small idea grew into a major brand. This led to major investors becoming interested in the product promising new IP, with ultimately a businessman named Doug Doring becoming involved with the company. Neopets Inc. was born from this business venture, and unfortunately was debatably the creator's first mistake. Whether it was due to naivete or pressure from the attention they were receiving, Adam and Donna were unaware of their new partner's connection to Scientology. Luckily, both of them were able to prevent any Scientology content from introducing itself onto the website. Despite the 
initial background hiccups in terms of the business, Neopets' early years had booming success. Reports for the site's metrics would state 35 million unique users, 11 million users on average per month, and up to 4 billion web page views or essentially clicks. About 20% of the reported users at the time were 18 years or older, with the remaining 80% being an average of 14 years old. It was obvious. Kids and early teenagers loved Neopets, and the brand looked like it had an exciting future. As I've been showing here, Neopets had a ton of brand deals with companies like McDonald's, Burger King, toy lines, and merchandise. In 2003, Neopets was even big enough to have its own trading card game with several expansions. However, it only lasted three years, being discontinued in 2006, which isn't a big surprise by trading card game standards. But like a lot of companies that start small, the business grows into something different, and on June 20th of 2005, Viacom, the owners of Nickelodeon, purchased Neopets Inc. for $160 million. The two founders, Adam Powell and Donna Williams, stepped away from the company after the purchase, stating creative differences in the vision of Neopets. Without the creators on board now, how would Neopets be managed moving forward? We've got to have money. Well, let's take a step back and look at things on a deeper level. Viacom had been in business for quite a number of years before the purchase, meaning they could at least, in theory, make the brand last and use their reach to make it even bigger. It also made sense from a branding perspective to incorporate Neopets with their children's network, Nickelodeon, to advertise the site on an even bigger level, which is exactly what they would do when this business deal was complete. Commercials began airing on Nickelodeon soon after the deal, cementing Neopets Neopets even further into kids' culture. Over the years, once Viacom took over Neopets, it would have quite a lot of campaigns and changes. Neopets' first foray into the video game industry debuted on November 16th, 2005, with the release of Neopets The Darkest Fairy, an action-adventure game similar to Zelda that was published by Sony Computer Entertainment of all companies. The game saw middling success, but this meant that Neopets was growing even more and we would see even more video game adaptations of the Neopets world on platforms like DS and PSP. In 2006, they released Neopets Mobile, which was a T-Mobile exclusive application service that allowed you to interact with Neopets on the go. Essentially a smartphone app before smartphones were widely available, specifically for Neopets. The website would see an overhaul on April 27, 2007. Tons of new features were added, and with the help of ad advertising Neopets on the popular Nickelodeon channel between commercial breaks, traffic to the website was at an all-time high. Throughout the Viacom era, Neopets would slowly start to see some heavier monetization. Things like partnering with the ever-massively growing Korean company Nexon, they introduced microtransactions to the sites where users could buy virtual items. However you shake it though, this era in Neopets was still relatively successful, with reports by June 2011 reporting that the website had recorded 1 trillion clicks since its inception. Neopets would see a second shift in ownership on March 17th, 2014. Viacom sold the Neopets ownership to the company Jumpstart, known for their educational PC games and media. Since Jumpstart was a company aimed at media for a younger audience, it made sense for them to purchase Neopets since the brand was aimed at that demographic. Although, weirdly enough, it was stated that Jumpstart acquired Neopets because the audience was older. <laughs> You're right. You're joking about that, right? Following the acquisition soon after, the site would obviously start removing all affiliation with Nickelodeon and Viacom. The site continued on as normal, albeit being a bit slow with updates upon the initial purchase. However, things continued on as normal more or less for the Neopets community. Jumpstart would have some further troubles acclimating to their new community, having an event where the site's profanity filters stopped working properly, and for a full weekend, users were able to post tons of 
of inappropriate content. Jumpstart would apologize for this, but obviously this event was documented as a red flag for the new company heading Neopets. Still, the site pushed through. Reports on January 2017 would announce that Neopets still had an estimated 100,000 daily active users, which while not booming like it was in the early 2000s, is still rather significant. Jumpstart's ownership was short-lived though, as they would be acquired by Chinese company NetDragon on July 3rd, 2017. Once again, even with the slight change on the back end business-wise, the site continued, with in-universe events returning after the acquisition. Unfortunately, the first reports of metric declines came in during the year of 2020, with data being sure that the site was viewed an average of 3.4 million times per month. Compare that to the early 2000s, where the views were reported to be in the billions. Neopets had been declining at this point for some time now. This was probably due to a mix of things, like the Neopets audience becoming older, microtransactions on the site and the negative culture surrounding them, as well as the community game sites like Neopets, Club Penguin, and Gaia Online simply becoming a relic of the past. Think about that last point. In 2024, would you rather play a game that has a normal interface and feel to it, or would you rather navigate a website that simply acts as a game hub? Fast forwarding to 2019, the announcement that the long-supported Adobe Flash would be discontinued in 2020. The site would have to start looking into moving their Flash elements to different systems. Ultimately, HTML5 was the system chosen, and when Flash ended support in 2020, a lot of the sites on the internet suffered from non-functioning web pages, Neopets very much included. Now, obviously those errors were fixed and development continued as normal with the Neopets team even launching a mobile-friendly version of the site in mid-2020. Reports also came in during the mid-2020 year with Neopets reporting that they were still retaining an average 100,000 users a day with an estimated 1.5 million monthly active users. However, one of the biggest missteps in the Neopets timeline would occur the following year on September 22nd, 2021. Neopets announced their NFT project known as Neopets Metaverse. What? Many of you probably audibly cringed as soon as you heard the acronym NFT, and that was largely the Neopets community's sentiment as well. Metaverse was meant to essentially be a 3D rendition of the Neopets website interface, making it play even more so like a video game without you having to navigate web pages. You would instead navigate a 3D world. The game idea is great on paper, but the implementation of NFTs and talks of blockchain tech in a community that was largely supposed to be aimed towards kids and young adults just made little to no sense. Let's give this a bit more context though. A few years ago, NFTs were largely seen as the next big digital currency for businesses to be able to sell to consumers. Tons of companies tried to hop on this trend, so I can see why the Neopets team might have thought this was a viable path to follow. However, the biggest question I think most of us would simply ask is why can't Neopets Metaverse just be a free-to-play 3D version of the website without NFTs? Money! Essentially, the whole announcement and idea of it was ruined by the implementation of these NFTs. The failure of this project is most likely what caused the next chain of events to follow. First was the announcement of Jumpstart's closure on June 30th, 2023. Next was the cancellation of Neopets Metaverse in July of 2023. Basically, years of development on this project was scrapped, and it ultimately ended up in it being a massive waste of time money, and effort. But through its failures, there is a bit of hope. On July 17th, 2023, it was announced that NetDragon retained Neopets. This resulted in the independent company forming World of Neopia, Inc., led by Dominic Law, who also headed the buyout deal. This new team comprised of some members of Neopets and Metaverse seemed to be dead set on a new goal, to revive the brand. It was announced that Neopets had been operating at a loss, but that with some funding they received, they had plans to incorporate changes that could help realize a brand revival. Soon after the website saw a revamp and a mobile application was also announced to be in development. The new efforts seemingly
finally worked, as reports of monthly users increased from 100,000 monthly users to 300,000, and the CEO would report that the company was finally on track to be profitable again, with a reason largely being that Neopets had been attracting an older audience feeling nostalgic. The game is 25 years old at this point overall, and the audience that played Neopets during the 90s and early 2000s are now adults. We are in the age of nostalgia, so having news that Neopets is seeing a population resurgence from the nostalgia-feeling crowd is not surprising, and it's incredibly smart to act on this opportunity. In fact, Neopets has really been trying to push its relevance, having a new trading card game that released this year called Neopets Battle Dome, as well as partnering with G Fuel to have a Neopets 25th anniversary bundle. The team has also announced some promising projects, like World of Neopets. Ultimately, though, is all of this too late. Neopets' claim to fame during its initial golden years was more or less short-lived as the metrics of the site's decline documented that it lost most of its audience, even when the brand was relatively still popular. In 2024, it's hard to think that an old IP like this could catch fire again for a second time. We are in a much different era. Culturally, the younger audience doesn't seem to cling to brands like Neopets anymore because of simple how much media is out there that grabs their attention. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, the market wasn't so incredibly saturated with products like it is nowadays. I can honestly see Neopets fighting an uphill battle to outlast the coming years of entertainment for one main reason. The nostalgia train has to eventually stop. At some point, Neopets will have to grow and attract an audience beyond the nostalgic feeling 20 and 30 year olds out there. I can see the team passionately trying to do so by getting a mobile application developed, as well as their project World of Neopets. Partnering with online companies that are popular in the social media space like G Fuel is an incredibly smart move to stay relevant, but currently it's all nostalgia bait. But hey, if Neopets wants to sponsor me, I'm available. Oh brother, this guy stinks! I'm hoping Neopets can outlast the current nostalgia surge it's getting and finally take a seat back into the spot. Spotlight, but only time will tell. I'm going to keep an eye on Neopets' developments and wish it the best. Neopets wasn't really my thing back in the day, but I had a really close friend who played it quite a bit, and whenever I think of Neopets, I think of the first time he showed me the website and how cool it was to see all of the stuff he had collected. But now I turn things to the audience. Do you think Neopets is dead? Did you play Neopets back in the day? What are some of your fondest memories of Neopets? Have you jumped back in recently? Comment below and let me know, and in fact, if you made it this far into the video, comment hashtag Neopets25. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video to support my content. Follow all my social media in the description below, and hopefully I will see you all next time.